Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party, the posting of the colors by the United States Strategic Command Honor Guard, and the singing of our national anthem by Command Performance. Thank you, and please remain standing as Chaplain Kim Bowen with the 55th Wing delivers the invocation. Oh, Chaplain. All right, ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. It's my honor to introduce our distinguished guests who are participating in today's ceremony. Later, they will man the shovels as we break ground. Introducing Governor Dave Heineman, Governor of Nebraska, and his wife, Miss Sally Ganim. The Honorable Ben Nelson, Senator of Nebraska. The Honorable Lee Terry, Representative of Nebraska. The Honorable Jeff Fortenberry, Representative of Nebraska. The Honorable Adrian Smith, Representative of Nebraska. General C. Robert Kaler, Commander, United States Strategic Command, and his wife Marge. The Honorable Rita Sanders, Mayor of Bellevue, and her husband Rick. Major General Kendall P. Cox, representing U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. 
Mr. Mark Correll, Deputy Air Force Civil Engineer. Mr. Brian Scurry, representing Space and Naval Warfare Systems Command. Colonel John T. Roush, Jr., Commander, 55th Wing. Mr. Joe Lempka, representing Kiewit Phillips. And Mr. George A. Little, Chairman and CEO of HDR Incorporated. We'd also like to welcome our senior leaders from United States Strategic Command, various local community leaders, the Honorable Rick Cheehy, Lieutenant Governor of Nebraska, the Honorable David Black, Mayor of Papillion, the Honorable Don Stenberg, Treasurer of Nebraska, Command Sergeant Major Pat Alston, Command Senior Enlisted Leader, United States Strategic Command, and his wife Felicia. Vice Admiral C.R. Bell and his guest, Ms. Eileen Easton. <laughs> Lieutenant General Bob Henson and his wife, Karen. <laughs> the Honorable Abby Cornett, State Senator of Nebraska. <laughs> the Honorable Bo McCoy, State Senator of Nebraska. <laughs> the Honorable Heath Mello, State Senator of Nebraska. The Honorable Jared Meem Nordquist, State Senator of Nebraska. The Honorable Scott Price, State Senator of Nebraska. The Honorable James Smith, State Senator of Nebraska. And although unper personally unable to attend, we are proud to welcome from Senator Mike Johan's office, Ms. Nancy Joner, State Director. And to all other U.S. STRATCOM 55th Wing and community leaders, welcome. At this time, I would like to welcome Colonel John Rausch, Commander of the 55th Wing, to the podium. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to obviously welcome you all today to this uh, nice, brisk morning for this historic occasion, this groundbreaking ceremony for the new U.S. STRAC Strategic Command and Control Facility. I'd like to not only recognize all those uh, distinguished visitors, to mention Governor Heineman, Senator Nelson, our representatives Terry, Fortenberry, and Smith, as well as all the other local and state uh, leaders that were able to join us. Lots of DVs, really appreciate you coming out and joining us here today. I'd like to thank General Kaler for the opportunity to represent the rest of Team Offit out here today and uh, offer just a few words in this, uh, like I said, brisk morning. This ceremony is a milestone event for the, for the long, it's been long awaited and sorely needed. Some of us have been around for many, many years as we talked about the different things that needed to go on in that building. So this upgrade is obviously a great opportunity for the U.S. Strat Strategic Command as well as the entire team. Since this base was established as Fort Crook in the, 19, in, in the 1890s, we've seen a few significant events that have profoundly altered the nature of life on this base. In 1918, balloons arrived and the path towards airmanship began in this little local area. In 1924, we saw the arrival of light aircraft. The skies over Bellevue, Nebraska have never been the same. During World War II, we saw groundbreaking on the other side of the base for the Martin Bomber Plant in 1941, and a workforce surged on the base to 14,500 that would eventually build 2,100 bombers. In 1955, Strategic Air Command broke ground to build a new headquarters on the other side of the hill over there, the LeMay Complex, and another era was ushered in. When SAC transitioned to U.S. Strategic Command, the first version in 1992, the 55th Wing was realigned under Air Combat Command. However, as the host unit here at Offutt, we've remained intertwined with U.S. STRATCOM, and our years of, and history are linked. As a matter of fact, once this new C2 facility is complete, our shared history will continue to grow even more, as it may allow uh, organizations within the 55th Wing to consolidate and realign many of our missions into STRATCOM's current home. So you can see the state-of-the-art facility is going to have a positive impact throughout all of Team Offutt. To get to the point today, it took a lot of great teamwork and vision, and we're thankful to be part of that team. However, this is only the first step. A lot of heavy lifting is still to be done, literally, and we look forward to working with the many organizations represented here today and others as we see this former nine-hole golf course turn to the new home of U.S. Strategic Command. We're proud to host STRATCOM and look forward to continuing as partners and teammates. Once again, I'd like to thank and acknowledge everyone for attending today, our elected officials for their continued support, as well as all the local servicemen in the audience for their service. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Roush. I'm now honored to welcome the Governor of Nebraska, Dave Heineman, to the podium. Thank you. 
Good morning, and first of all, I want to thank uh, General Kaler for this cool, brisk Air Force morning. As an Army guy, we would never do it this way, General. I want you to know that. This is a great day for Offutt Air Force Base, the state of Nebraska, and the United States of America. This new headquarters will strengthen STRATCOM's ability to perform its national security and national defense missions. Offutt Air Force Base is a critical component of America's defense capabilities, and this new headquarters will be a modern, technologically advanced, state-of-the-art facility. Our military personnel deserve and need this new headquarters. And as a veteran, I'm very proud of the men and women who defend our freedom every single day all across the world. We are grateful and appreciative of your service to our country. There are many individuals to thank for this new headquarters, and I want to start by thanking Nebraska's federal delegation and state and local officials who helped make this day a reality. I'd also like to thank all of our military leaders for their support of this new headquarters. I want to thank the Omaha and Bellevue business community for their support. As was mentioned previously, this was a team effort. This new command and control facility will provide STRATCOM greater mission capability and flexibility over the next several decades. The LeMay complex, while currently capable, is not able to support the command's mission systems long term and lacks needed redundancy in, in terms of information technology. The information technology systems requirements were a key element behind the need for this new facility. The design was centered on STRATCOM's need for a modern, flexible infrastructure. This facility will be more efficient, reducing maintenance cost. It should also be noted that the current facility supported the single mission of nuclear deterrence for 56 years. Today, the command has numerous missions and national responsibilities, each with unique systems and equipment required to execute and support those missions. STRATCOM's mission has expanded significantly this past decade, venturing further into space and cyber missions, requiring this state-of-the-art facility to synchronize operations that defend the United States from our adversaries and to preserve peace and freedom throughout the world. Congratulations to all of you. And again, I want to thank our military personnel for saving, serving our country. We are very, very proud of you. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Heineman. I would now like to welcome Congressman Lee Terry, representative of Nebraska, to the podium. Thank you very much. And uh, to carry uh, back on, on Governor Heineman's comments here, this, this facility is really important to Omaha and the metropolitan Bellevue area. It, it's more than just a building. To us, as a person that's born and raised in this area, it, it's part of us. And to see this new effort this new building arising gives us great deal of confidence in our importance and stature in protecting all American citizens. When the original building was built in, or decided to be built in 1957, Cornhusker's record was one in nine. But the most important facet is that Omaha became the focal point of protecting the United States from nuclear weapons and uh, was the decision makers on how to defend America. Today, the world is much more complex. A nuclear command is just one of the components that you have to deal with in the nature of warfare today. And so technology is more important today than it ever has been in defending America. And this what this building represents is the new era the new STRATCOM. And as a local boy, General Kaler, I'm extremely proud that you're here and STRATCOM's going to be here for the next generation. So I want to thank you, General Kaler, and uh, 
geez, just God bless all of our men and women in uniform and the folks that are working here in the 55th and STRATCOM. Uh, one last thing, Ben and I were trading some more stories on the way over here. Of course, ours are political. Ben, you did a great job leading this effort. Uh, you really were the leader on this. Uh, but we were trading some stories because what a lot of people don't know is there were a lot of other people, both in the Senate and the House, trying to steal this project away to other states and areas, in including as late as last year, uh, when I had to pull aside our chairman uh, uh, and subcommittee chair that were starting to second guess the decisions uh, of our chiefs. And uh, even before that, in the House of Representatives, then committee chairman Ike Skelton was openly questioning the project, and we had our delegation had a nice little meeting with Ike Skelton then. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of water to get to this point has gone under the bridge, but I'll tell you what, all of those efforts, Ben, aren't they worth it now? We are just so proud. Thank you all that were involved in making this happen. Thank you, Congressman Terry. I now welcome Congressman Jeff Fortenberry, representative of Nebraska. Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you all so much for the privilege of being able to join you for this extraordinary occasion. Uh, General Kaler, I know you are extremely happy about this. Once we turn those shovels, there's no turning back. I assure you, I wanted to tell you a story, and I assure you that I spent enough time in deference to Air Force officials to potentially contribute to make this day happening. The secretary, the assistant secretary of the Air Force and I had breakfast a little while back, and he politely reminded me, because he deals with budget and finance, that this project is taking up about 40% of his entire construction budget. I sat there as long as I thought was necessary to assure that I gave him due deference to this consideration. The United States Strategic Command, as you all know, as you all work to strive to endeavor to uh, complete its successful ongoing missions, is the front line of our nation's defense against nuclear attack and prevention of the spread of weapons of mass destruction. As a Strategic Air Command helped protect America through the tense, filled Cold War era, STRATCOM today continues its critical work in the nuclear deterrence area with broader responsibilities in accompanying rapidly developing technological threats, particularly in the area of space as well as cyberspace. And as, all, as you all are aware, the facilities housing this crucial work are really bursting at the seams and are in need of an expansion. The new command and control facility will help STRATCOM expand its capabilities, synchronize its complex mission, and make operating systems more efficient and facility management more cost effective. The new headquarters also solidifies Offutt Air Force's base key role as an economic and community partner to Bellevue, the Omaha metro area, as well as to the entire state of Nebraska. This major construction project will provide great benefits to nearby Nebraska families and small businesses. Uh, yesterday, I was pleased to help announce another exciting new development, a new partnership between STRATCOM and the, and the University of Nebraska. The newly formed University Affiliated Research Center will employ the talents of Nebraska's research scientists to provide research and development services in support of STRATCOM's diverse set of missions. Our university is now one of only 14 research centers across the country, and this will help strengthen our national security, enhance the critical defense systems in place at STRATCOM, and elevate world-class university at uh, world-class research at the University of Nebraska. Both new projects are extraordinary developments for our state and our nation. We can be proud that a key component of our national defense makes its home right here in Nebraska and that Nebraskans will play a critical role in major new steps to enhance and improve our national security for years to come. I want to applaud and thank all who have been intimately involved in making this day a reality. And let me join with Congressman Terry also in providing a special word of note and thanks to Senator Nelson for his ongoing leadership in this regard. This has been a comprehensive effort of the federal delegation, but it does take significant leadership. And at key moments, Senator Nelson provided that. 
So thank you, Senator, for your entire service, for your career and entire uh, commitment throughout your service to this project. I want to thank as well all of you who serve our country in the military. God bless you all. May God bless America. Thank you, Congressman Fortenberry. I now welcome Congressman Adrian Smith, representative of Nebraska, to the podium. Thank you. It's great to be here, part of uh, Team Nebraska in Washington. Uh, thank you, General Kaler, for the invitation to be here today. As the 3rd District does kind of close in uh, around uh, some parts of, of eastern Nebraska, I'm great, grateful to have the opportunity, though, to support the men and women in uniform uh, here at STRATCOM and, and really support the mission uh, of our U.S. military in uh, adapting to a changing world. I'm grateful for the opportunity, like I said, to be a part of the team. Thank you to uh, Senator Nelson for your efforts uh, on this project. Uh, as we look across Nebraska and across America, uh, there's so much uh, to be proud of and uh, so much uh, that we should work hard to carry forward. So again, I say thank you to all of our men and women in, unif in uniform and to our veterans uh, for your service. Take care. God bless. Thank you, Congressman Smith. I now welcome Senator Ben Nelson, Senator of Nebraska, to the podium. Thank you very much, and uh, to all our distinguished guests today, welcome, and thank you for all that you have done to make this day possible. Uh, before all those kind comments about me are taken, in, taken seriously, I think I should uh, give you just one, one brief uh, story. Right after I was elected governor, uh, I went out to uh, Lexington, Nebraska, to speak at a, at a D.A.R.E. graduation. That's the fifth grade uh, program for drug and alcohol awareness programs keep kids uh, from, from experimenting or taking drugs and alcohol. And after the uh, speech was over, I stood on the stage and shook hands with a lot of the young graduates. And, uh, but uh, my staffer told me this story on the way back to Lincoln. He said he was talking to one of the young fifth graders and said, uh, what do you think of the governor? Little boy scratched his head and thought a little while and he said, well, you know, uh, my dad doesn't think he's very bright, but I like him a lot. Uh, and, you know, I got to thinking about that, and after I got over being a little bit perplexed by it, I realized that when dim-witted parents can have brilliant children, there's hope for all of us. <laughs> well, this is a great day. This is a great day. It, uh, some people thought it might be a cold day when we got it. Well, this is pretty close to being cold, but we got it. And what I want to say is that STRATCOM serves this country in a way that is not only uh, important to our, our international relationships and our national security, but there is an element of it that we understand that is economic development for the state of Nebraska, and we never overlook that. But charged with handling space operations, missile defense, global command and control, intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance, strategic deterrence, and combating weapons of mass destruction is a pretty large plate full of responsibilities. It plays one of the most important, but at times, the least known roles in America's national security. But never before has the role and the mission of STRATCOM been more important than in our world today. Because as our world grows more interconnected, American ideals and interests will continue to spread further and will continue to be under siege. Any dissipated threat will be replaced by a new one and the necessity of defense against these threats will only grow. And the new threats require new thinking and new resources. As I've said so many times, you can't fight cyber warfare with drop cords. Defense spending continues to be under severe pressure in Washington and is going to be under even more pressure in the foreseeable future. Needless to say, it was a hard time in a harsh climate to get this project done and the size of it only made it that much more difficult. But thanks to our, our delegation and thanks to the support we got from General Kaler and be prior, prior to him, General Chilton, we, per, we persevered. Because as a member of the Senate Armed Services Committee and chair of the Armed Services Strategic Forces Committee, 
I understood the importance of having a first-class command center to deal with the strate strategic forces obligations of our country through STRATCOM. And I helped work with others to be able to do that. Our committee unanimously approved the 2012 NDAA uh, budget that allocated $564 million for this project. That speaks volumes. And in those committee meetings, I'm not ashamed to say that we did push hard for STRATCOM. Not because it's in Nebraska, not simply because of that, but because STRATCOM is a necessity. It is a necessary tool to defer conflict and prevent. I want to thank my my colleagues in the, in the Nebraska delegation for their continuing support. Uh, I want to thank the members of Strategic Command and all those in associated uh, in this project today. I should tell you that I did get one complaint about the location. I got a call from the U.S. Golf Association uh, complaining about the elimination of one of the golf courses. Uh, now, you're supposed to laugh at that. I mean... We would give up a golf course for this command center in a heartbeat. So it was a, it was a wise decision to make. And a special thank you uh, goes out to uh, General Bob Henson and Admiral Bob Bell, who first brought the need for the project to my attention and helped advocate it throughout the exhaustive process in Washington. Uh, and I want to say also thank you to uh, State Senators Heath Mello and Abby Cornett uh, for their help in pushing this project through the red tape of state government. Sometimes red tape extends throughout. Thank you all. May God continue to bless America and our troops all across this vast globe. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Nelson. I now welcome General C. Robert Kaler, Commander, United States Strategic Command, to the podium. Thank you very much, and let me begin by wishing a very uh, happy, happy birthday to the United States Navy, 237 years young today. So to all of our sailors, uh, happy birthday, and uh, what a great service, and, and what tremendous representatives we have here at Strategic Command of the United States Navy. Good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here. Uh, we've already gone through all the introductions. Uh, this is quite a, an array of officials that have decided to join us this morning. I think that says something about the uh, amount of support that we have uh, across the country, really. It's represented through the political leadership that we have here in Nebraska at the local level, at the state level, and certainly at the federal level. And what our men and women in Strategic Command see through you is the support of the American people. So thank you all for being here. Uh, and I do believe that, that uh, this is a great there's something, uh, there's poetic justice, I think, here in uh, doing a groundbreaking on a day like today. If this isn't vintage Nebraska, I don't know what is. There's, uh, of course, that sharp, uh, cool air in the, in the uh, breeze. And I think if you listen carefully, you can probably hear the thud of a football or two in the background. So what a great day this is in Nebraska. Uh, you know, uh, the name Nebraska has a tremendous significance to those of us that wear military uniforms. Uh, not only is it a wonderful city and the epitome of, of uh, community support, uh, but there's uh, a ship, uh, a warship, USS Nebraska, and of course, uh, none of us can forget that there's a beach named uh, Omaha. So, uh, groundbreaking, I think, is an appropriate way for us to describe what we're doing here today. Uh, we break new ground to celebrate the construction of our new command and control facility. We also celebrate the groundbreaking technology and capabilities this new facility will provide. Today is also a unique opportunity to break with as well as to honor the past. U.S. STRATCOM and its predecessor Strategic Air Command, or SAC of course, were founded with an eye to the future. It was all about rapidly incorporating the latest technology and capabilities. It was all about innovating the means and methods to deter what were the cutting edge threats of the day. The men and women of SAC and STRATCOM have done their jobs well since 1946. Of course, they played a critical role in winning the Cold War. They've successfully deterred nuclear attacks and other strategic attacks against the United States and our allies. They've participated in many crises and contingency operations over the years. Our current headquarters, as you heard, was begun in 1955. 
it was designed with a projected lifetime of 25 years. And the SAC staff moved into the building in 1957. Now, I would offer that much has changed since 1957. Of course, in 1957, telephones and electric typewriters were the height of technology. The earliest computers in those days filled entire rooms in that building, in some cases, entire floors in that building. The SAC command post in those days was really the hub of a global telephone network. And of course, the global security environment was far different than the one we face today. We know that things are different today. The Cold War ended 20 years ago. We are in a new operating environment that presents us with a rapidly evolving threat and, of course, we are facing rapidly evolving capabilities. There is tremendous complexity and tremendous uncertainty, and one-size-fits-all solutions won't cut it any longer. Dealing with multi-domain, multi-regional, multi-capable threats requires unprecedented integration and synchronization of capabilities, priorities, plans, and operations on a global scale. Command control and communication systems built to respond to the threats and requirements of today and tomorrow, not those of yesterday. Protection from a wide range of threats and from those that are obvious and visible, like violent extremists, to those that are not obvious and may be invisible, like electromagnetic pulse and cyber attack. The capabilities this facility will provide put us on a path to the future. It's a future that secures America and our allies from information age threats with information age systems and capabilities. In 1996, the United States Air Force honored SAC's second and probably most famous commander, General Curtis LeMay, by naming the current headquarters complex after him. Sometimes I wonder what General LeMay would think about all of this change. And I often tell visitors, if you listen carefully, that whirring sound you hear in the background is Curtis LeMay spinning in his grave. Now, I think that's probably true, but I think he's spinning because he probably wants us to hurry up. I never had the privilege of meeting General LeMay, but I know some things about him, and I think if he was here today, he would say, what took you so long? He would tell us to get on with it. That's because he was an innovator, and I think he knew three important things. He knew that you confront the threats you have today, you prepare for the threats you expect tomorrow, and you honor those who met the threats you had yesterday. The, groundbreak, uh, the groundbreaking that we have today honors his legacy, and considering the example he set, that's quite an accomplishment. Those of us who are here at the start of this project now have a tremendous responsibility. First, it's our job to validate that our country's investment in STRATCOM's future continues to be a wise one. The men and women of STRATCOM will continue to meet that challenge by deterring attack on the United States and our allies with a safe, secure, effective nuclear deterrent force with resilient space capabilities and with effective cyber defenses. Second, it is our job to keep this major project on schedule and within budget. To that end, I pledge my full commitment and constant supervision along with that of our partners to deliver on our promises. Let me add one final and special thank you to our partners in the United States Air Force for their commitment to this project it is the largest construction effort underway in the United States Air Force now and will be for some number of years to come. We have a number of tremendous partners that we look forward to working with as we go forward, and it will take the dedication and close collaboration of all of us to bring this project through to its successful completion. Thanks to all of the partners as we break ground here today. Thank all of you in attendance. Thank you to Senator Nelson and the federal delegation in particular, and thank you all for your support of Strategic Command and our nation's security. Now, let's get on with the groundbreaking. Thank you very much. Thank you, General Kaler. We would now like to invite some of our honored guests to come forward to assist General Kaler and Colonel Roush in the groundbreaking for the U.S. STRATCOM Command and Control Facility. Please join me as I welcome our guests up to break the ground. General C. Robert Kaler. <laughs> Governor Dave Heineman. 
Senator Ben Nelson. Congressman Lee Terry. Congressman Jeff Fortenberry. Congressman Adrian Smith. Mayor Rita Sanders. Major General Kendall P. Cox. Mr. Mark Correll. Mr. Brian Scurry. Colonel John T. Roush, Jr. Mr. Joe Limka. And Mr. George A. Little. Please stand fast. Our photographers record this momentous occasion. It is now time to break the dirt. Stand by to dig. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand as we conclude the ceremony with the playing of the Armed Services Medley by the Offutt Brass and remain standing for the departure of the official party.
Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for attending the historic groundbreaking for the United States Strategic Command's new command and control facility. This concludes our ceremony.